नमस्कार अ वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज रेणुका एंड विद मी इज मनोज सिंह राणा ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शुल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds virtual summit with his British counterpart Boris Johnson. Launch roadmap 2030 to transform India UK bilateral ties. India and UK identify five areas for cooperation paving way for deeper and stronger engagement. More than 357,000 fresh cases of COVID-19 registered in the country. Over 320,000 people recover in the last 24 hours. At least 23 people killed as rail overpass collapses in Mexico City and BCCI suspends IPL 2021 for the season after four players test positive for COVID-19. As the number of COVID cases are on the rise again, we appeal to our listeners not to lower the guard, follow all the precautions and all those above 18 years to get vaccinated without any hesitation. Stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his British counterpart Boris Johnson had substantive discussions today on the entire gamut of bilateral ties and exchanged views on regional and global issues of mutual interest during the India UK virtual summit. Briefing media in virtual mode after the meeting, Joint Secretary Europe West Sandeep Chakravarti said the first big deliverable of the meeting was the launch of Roadmap 2030. Both our leaders had substantive discussions on the entire gamut of our ties and exchanged views on regional and global issues of mutual interest. The strong complementarities and growing convergences between the two countries in all these areas were underscored. The first big deliverable of the summit was the launch of the roadmap 2030. Last year when the two prime ministers had spoken on telephone, they had agreed to to make this roadmap to transform India UK ties and today the two leaders launched the roadmap. The implementation of the roadmap will elevate uh, the india uk relationship into a comprehensive strategic partnership the roadmap lists a number of concrete forward looking and outcome oriented activities that both sides have agreed to pursue in five key areas There are five areas which have been identified. One is, of course, increasing people-to-people contacts, trade and economy, defence and security, climate action, and health. Its implementation will be closely monitored through an annual strategic review meeting at the foreign ministers' level, and this meeting will then report the progress to the two prime ministers. Another very important, and I would say, a big ticket announcement of the virtual summit was the declaration of enhanced trade partnership. The two-way trade between India and United Kingdom in 2019-20 was of the order. of 15.4 billion US dollars although it has been rising in the recent years the figures do not reflect the true potential of trade between the world's fifth and sixth largest economies to seize them and unlock the true potential the two leaders announced their intent to negotiate a comprehensive and balanced fta including consideration of an interim trade agreement for delivering early gains the ambition is to more than double the bilateral trade by 2030 India and UK also agreed to substantially strengthen the defense and security engagement including in the maritime domain counter terrorism and cyber space UK also recently come up with its integrated review on security defense and foreign policy which identifies India as a key partner as part of the British tilt to Indo Pacific UK has announced deployment of the carrier strike group in the Indo Pacific region India has agreed to conduct joint exercise with the CSG later this year and also launch new maritime dialogue opportunities for defense co development and co- production were also discussed both leaders have also agreed on an early market access package under this uk will open up the fishery sector for more indian players facilitate more opportunities for nurses recognize indian seafarers certificates and also enter into a joint dialogue on the social security agreement in return india has agreed to uk's ask for on fruits medical devices and mutual recognition of master degrees and also work towards reciprocal opening of legal services The two leaders also discuss the global pandemic situation and ongoing cooperation in the fight against it. Prime Minister Modi thanked Prime Minister Johnson for the prompt medical assistance provided by the UK in the wake of severe second wave in India. 
UK was one of the first to respond sending critical medical equipment including oxygen concentrators, cylinders, ventilators and oxygen plants. The successful vaccine partnership through the Oxford AstraZeneca SII collaboration was highlighted. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said he had a very productive virtual summit with his UK counterpart Boris Johnson. In a series of tweets, Mr Modi said an ambitious roadmap 2030 has been adopted for elevating India-UK ties to a comprehensive strategic partnership. He welcomed the launch of an enhanced trade partnership as a roadmap to a comprehensive FTA with a target to more than double the bilateral trade by 2030. Mr. Modi said they also discussed ongoing cooperation on COVID-19 pandemic and reiterated commitment to ambitious climate action to meet Paris goals in the run-up to COP26. The number of total active cases of COVID-19 in the country further swelled up today to comprise nearly 17% of the total reported cases. The Health Ministry has informed that currently over 34,47,000 people are reported to be suffering from the viral pandemic and are either hospitalised or under home isolation. In the last 24 hours, the nation registered 3,57,229 new COVID cases. With this, the recovery rate has further slipped to stand at 81.91%. Meanwhile, the government dismissed a media report that it has wasted time in effective allocation and distribution of COVID pandemic relief material. It has termed the report of a TV channel as misleading, which has claimed that while the first consignment of COVID-19 assistance arrived in India on the 25th of last month, the centre took seven days to frame the standard operating procedure or SOP of distributing these life-saving medical supplies. India's vaccination drive against COVID-19 continues and has crossed the cumulative tally of over 15 crore 89 lakh doses so far. In the world's largest vaccination programme, the nation administered more than 17 lakh doses of COVID vaccine in the last 24 hours. The Health Ministry has informed that in a span of 108 days since the beginning of the vaccination drive, the country has so far successfully given the first dose of vaccine to nearly 13 crore people. On the other hand, around more than 2 crore 90 lakh people have been fully vaccinated with both the required doses. In the third phase of India's vaccination drive, which began from 1st of this month, in which everyone in the age group of 18 to 44 years are given COVID vaccine doses. Over 4 lakh doses have been administered so far in this drive. In the last 24 hours alone, more than 2 lakh 15,000 people in this age group were given the first shot of the vaccine. Citizens in the age group of 18 to 44 years can register themselves in the COVID vaccination program through the COVIN portal, covin.gov.in or also through the Arogya Setu app. The Defence Research and Development Organisation is setting up five medical oxygen plants within the first week of this month in and around Delhi. In order to tackle the surge in COVID-19 cases and subsequent requirement of oxygen, the DRDO will set up 500 medical oxygen plants across the country within three months under the PM Cares Fund. The order has been placed for 380 plants and their delivery schedule is being monitored very closely. The sites are being prepared at each hospital in parallel. The Indian Railways is continuing its efforts to bring relief by delivering liquid medical oxygen to various states across the country. The Railway Ministry has said that Railways has delivered 1,585 tons of liquid medical oxygen so far to various states across the country. In today's hotspot section, we bring you an exclusive interview with Dr. Rakesh Mishra, Director of the Centre for Molecular Biology, CSIR, Hyderabad. Dr. Mishra will be talking about the latest developments in the management of COVID-19 in India, breakthroughs on the vaccine front and the precautions that need to be taken to alleviate the second wave of the COVID pandemic. We have with us today CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology Director, Dr. Rakesh K. Mishra. Namaskar, Dr. Rakesh Mishra ji. Namaskar. It has been uh, more than uh, 15 months that the COVID uh, and the coronavirus start uh, affecting the mankind across the world. And in between uh, several times you spoke uh, to our listeners and shared your uh, experience and observations and studies which are being uh, happening regarding coronavirus. So what is the latest uh, condition uh, in the wake of uh, second wave and uh, what exactly is happening uh, during this uh, second wave? 
it was expected there will be second wave there may be third wave but nobody imagined that this wave will be so ferocious so strong that we will have 4 lakh 3 lakh people new cases every day and it will overwhelm the healthcare system as such the virus is the same there is not much different though we see different variants and all they may be little more infectious but uh, disease symptoms the mortality they remain more or less same but what is happening now is that uh, because of the sudden surge in number of cases in many cities especially the healthcare system is uh, under tremendous stress and uh, care that is needed for the people is not uh, possible to deliver and that is what is a major problem what is the difference between the first wave and second wave as far as uh, virus load is concerned as far as we know there is no difference actually in the virus load the number of people infected are more there is a reason for that we can discuss that and that is why because of sudden increase in the number of people then it is like a chain reaction 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 8 and like that and then it goes in uh, and it spirals up multiplies like that the, the number of infected people then what is happening is a net number the absolute number of infected people is uh, people who need hospitalization is very high and uh, most important thing is we cannot have more and more healthcare workers that is going to be our biggest shortage exactly. and in fact in one and a half year of battle with uh, covid we have lost uh, more than 800 doctors uh, mm. to this uh, infection so that is something which is a matter of concern the coronavirus is spreading capability is the same thing during the first wave and second wave but because of people's behavior getting uh, fast spreading can we understand like this this virus is uh, like many other viruses uh, they keep changing they keep mutating and new variants will keep emerging and any variant which emerges if it is slightly more infectious than the previous one it slowly increases its footprint and becomes dominant and other versions uh, disappear that is what is happening with this virus also and mm. continuously variants are emerging so it is only expected that uh, newer variants will probably be more infectious uh, slightly more infectious but method to prevent that infection is the same and what happened in our country was that we all became very relaxed was end of the year beginning of the year and vaccine has come cases went down because of very strict lockdown and fear in the people which was in the first round cases came down dramatically and uh, i think top to bottom people thought that we are out of uh, pandemic now and people started to do normal behavior of virus is there everywhere mm-hmm. now it got a chance to infect large number of people you were just mentioning about uh, variations in uh, corona virus like in mm-hmm. any other virus what is the current uh, virus variant which is affecting more india is very large country so like if you look into the north of india in punjab in delhi and haryana and maybe in up although we don't have information in these places the most prominent one is the uk variant which came from uk and uh, with some group of people infected from uk came and entered the some parts of the punjab or haryana or chandigarh delhi and this somewhere this region and they had large large gatherings and meeting that's how the data suggests that clustering then spread the uk variant in those people who people who are local and then they went to their villages cities and place and it is known to spread more efficiently so it spread fast so punjab more than 90% probably cases are uk variant now another wave independently that originated that has more another variant which people are calling double mutant or which actually its name is b.1.61 seventh variant which probably originated in maharashtra sometime october november but when activities increased the people became more careless and suddenly started to take the advantage and became a wave maharashtra has generally this double mutant or 617 variant in a larger number maybe 40 50% or more and some other variants little bit of uk variant also similarly in bengal there is another variant called 618 there also 617 the Mahar- Maharashtra dominant yeah. variant is taking over there and it will probably replace 618 uh, soon in the south of india now in andhra pradesh telangana or kerala even karnataka in these places there is another variant called l440k 
which has been around for many months and it's not very different from uh, common variants or older variants same mortality same kind of infectivity but uh, it was slowly taking over and i think this is more than 50 60% of the variants are that but now with more interaction and more in cases uh, this also is increasing its footprint in karnataka i think now the double mutant is spreading from uh, maharashtra side so as you can see in different parts of the country different kinds of uh, variants are mm. increasing so that means it is not the variant which is causing a problem problem is what is common in all these things mm. common is behavior of people or mm. carelessness if we have a large number of people infected and we are carrying virus which is more infectious so we are now providing virus a very strong platform to mm. come up with the new and maybe more dangerous maybe more dangerous also. also so to avoid that uh, we should break the chain as soon as we can so mm. all of us and this is not something which government can do or a state can do this is people have to do we have to understand and that's why i'm very keen that message goes to your radio stations that we have to take the matter in our hand which means wear the mask don't come out without in any purpose don't be in cluster and never remove your mask while talking outside with anybody mm. don't gather in one room like a cinema hall or restaurant or one room or some panchayat or whatever don't cluster together make social distance and uh, hand hygiene is important keep washing your hand frequently before you eat uh, don't touch your mouth again and again if we do these things we can still come out uh, with this without uh, any further damage this should be part of our culture coming to the point of the latest uh, studies and research which is going on uh, ccmb could you please uh, throw some light we have been doing several things one is we are doing very extensive monitoring or surveillance of the virus by genome sequencing to know which variant is coming and then when we find new variant we culture that in the lab so that we can study the variant more and that is how we know that vaccines are working yes. and we have been testing many products uh, sterilization method drugs uh, against uh, this virus using variant mm. we culture in the lab and there are lots of leads that are coming and hopefully they will reach people mm. we have also introduced new methods of testing which is very we call is drive swab method which is fast now icmr has approved and many governments are now going to use that so that will help us testing more people with same accuracy as rt pcr is known for is it a new type of uh, test altogether or any variation uh, between the previous tests and the new one it is the improvement of uh, rt pcr our test in rt pcr test uh, you collect the sample in a liquid called vtm that uh, is an nasopharyngeal swab is put in the tube which contains this pink color liquid and that liquid is then transported uh, to the lab for testing so it needs to be sealed properly because it can leak and when it reaches the lab it takes a lot time to open the seal and pack it and then take mm. out then uh, we take this uh, sample from vtm and make rna which is expensive and a time taking process in fact uh, that becomes the bottle Next, we have uh, done new method is that you take the swab but don't put in the vtm put it in a dry tube mm. and then bring that tube to the test lab so that means there is no liquid in the tube so you don't need to okay. seal it just mm. put a simple cover and nothing will leak mm. and i mean reach as a lab it is very safe for healthcare worker then you don't need to do rna preparation in this so you take uh, less than half the time and uh, it is much less expensive so same person who was doing 100 200 test in the same setting same machine, without any new addition can do now 400 600 test so, so what are the states uh, which are uh, taking up uh, this particular test sir? so currently this method is used uh, in a few places so one we use uh, in our place there are several companies that are using lab in uh, nagpur uh, neeri they are using they in fact they have used maximum they have done more than 50000 test uh, recently and because it is very fast mm. the only place where there is no backlog of sample rest of the lab exactly. in nagpur have the Uh-huh. backlog and now couple of days back maharashtra government has announced that they are going to adopt uh, dry swab method mm. so that will be very large consumption of uh, large use of this and uh, important thing is that we have signed agreement and given license to many companies including apollo hospitals spice health mary life and couple of other companies oh. who mm. are making kit based on our method so which will be the same property of uh, safe mm. fast and all and so i mm. think in coming week or two 
this will be very widely used uh, thing and it will mm. be helpful to people mm. one more thing which uh, is will be i am hopeful that it will come to use very soon mm. is the antibody treatment that we have developed along with a company in hyderabad uh, called wins biologicals and what we do in this is that we grow the virus in the lab and uh, in very large quantity and then inactivate the virus and then inject this virus into horses horses will develop antibody against this virus which is then isolated from the horses by from their blood they we don't have to kill the horse it we take some blood take out the antibody and they can inject more and keep getting more antibodies like that and this antibody is then injected in the person who has infection what has happened is uh, we have tested in the culture this very effective it neutralizes all the virus uh, variants so now dcgi the drug control journal of india has given approval to for the human phase 1 phase 2 trial which mm-hmm. should begin they have asked for few locations and all for trial so that should begin in one two days next week certainly i am very hopeful that those trials will be successful and in maybe three four weeks we will have a at least emergency usage uh, approval for this uh, this is going to be the first specific drug against uh, this disease so it will be given to people who go to hospital and they are sick but uh, not much damage if we inject then it will kill all the virus in the body and person should recover very quickly which places uh, you are going to try this uh, as part of uh, phase 1 and phase 2 trials at the moment we have chosen a hospital in delhi mm-hmm. and then another hospital in rajasthan in bikaner mm-hmm. so that they based on logistics and some uh, access to the patients and agri pha hospital agreeing to do that we will do from these two places how much time you are expecting it to take so if we the phase 1 phase 2 trial which will be done simultaneously mm-hmm. may get over in maybe 4 week 5 6 week that depends upon mm-hmm. how things go after that we have to go back to dcgi so we can if the results are very good then we can go for two applications simultaneously for phase 3 trial and for emergency usage uh, approval if we compare uh, already existing uh, a kind of treatment uh, like uh, plasma treatment uh, if we compare with that aspect uh, how different it is in fact uh, there is no treatment against this virus but plasma therapy is one thing and in fact you it is a very correct thing that you brought up it actually replaces plasma therapy in very sophisticated manner Man. in the sense plasma therapy you need a donor that person's blood has to match uh, that match in the sense it should not have other infections and so on and you are giving to a patient uh, who is in a difficult condition 100 ml 200 ml somebody else's plasma mm. which mm. generally causes a shock in the body and that's why it is never considered as a treatment it's always as emergency trial mode but uh, antibody that we are making proposing as a drug is very small volume a half a mm. milliliter is what will be required for injection mm. and it is concentrated only antibody it is not the plasma or other components in the blood has everything many mm. thing other than the antibody so this is more like a drug so it substitutes it uses the approach of uh, like passive immunity so that means antibody is going and attacking the virus but these antibody are provided externally so it should be much more effective and it's not like a plasma therapy but it will be a real mm. recognized drug i think like mm. snake bite it should be something like uh, anti dots of snake or uh, that mm. is uh, thing which is a few hundred rupees my feeling is uh, maybe couple of doses should be enough given in two days three days mm. three doses and it should be all right thank you so much for your insight yes. dr rakesh k mishra thank, thank you, you so much thank you it's pleasure talking this is all india radio giving you the world news three steps to stay protected and stay safe from covid-19 wear face mask do gaz ki doori to maintain social distancing maintain hand and face hygiene welcome back to the world news In Mexico at least 23 people including children were killed when a rail overpass collapsed in Mexico City. According to reports an elevated section of metro track in Mexico City partially collapsed on Monday night bringing down rubble and some train carriages onto the road below. The city's comprehensive risk management and civil protection agency said that around 70 more were also injured. There were also children among the fatalities. This is the deadliest incident in decades in the city's metro system, one of the busiest in the world. 
The Biden administration has raised the refugee admissions cap in the USA to 62,500 for the year 2021. The White House in a statement on Monday announced the emergency presidential determination on refugee admissions as in line with the U.S. commitment to humanitarian values. The decision comes after a wave of criticism for keeping the refugee cap at a historical low level, according to reports. As the domestic stock market's key indices slide in the last hour of trade to post nearly 1% fall each, and the rupee appreciated slightly against the US dollar. In the international markets, French crude prices rise sharply towards $89 a barrel, a report from the business world. The Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange slipped 465 points, 1%, to close at 48,254. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange slid 138 points, 0.9%, to 14,497. In the global equity markets, Asia-Pacific ended mixed today. So Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index climbed 0.7%. South Korea's Kospi Index rose 0.6%, but Singapore's Straight Times Index fell 0.2%. Stock markets in Japan and China were closed for a holiday. In Europe, London's FTSE 100 had gained 0.1%, but France's CAC 40 had fallen 0.3%, and Germany's DAX had declined 1.4% in intraday trade. Global crude oil prices dipped today after more U.S. states eased lockdowns and the European Union sought to attract travelers, helping to offset concerns over fuel demand in India as COVID-19 cases soared. So Brent crude futures shot up $1.30 to trade at $68 and and 86 cents a barrel. U.S. crude futures jumped one dollar and 18 cents to 65 dollars and 67 cents a barrel. Back home, gold gained 97 rupees to 46,758 rupees per 10 grams at Delhi's bullion market. Silver jumped 1,282 rupees to 70,270 rupees per kilo. In the international market, gold was trading marginally lower at 1,788 dollars per ounce, and silver was flat at 26 dollars and 90 cents per ounce. And in the foreign exchange market, the rupee appreciated by 7 paise to 73 rupees and 85 paise against the US dollar. Arjun Chaudhary for World News, All India Radio. Moving on to sports, the 14th edition of the Indian Premier League has been postponed on Tuesday as the country battles the second wave of COVID-19. The BCCI made the announcement saying that the safety of each and every person involved with the league was the priority. The decision was reached immediately after Sunrisers Hyderabad wicketkeeper batsman Riddhiman Saha tested positive Tuesday morning. Meanwhile, the Australian players stranded at the postponed IPL will either stay back in India or move to a third country as Cricket Australia and Australian Cricketers Association today made it clear that they would not seek exemptions to their national government's norms. The Australian government has suspended all flights from India till May the 15th. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Washington Post reports that Netanyahu's 28-day window to build a government after failing to win an outright majority in March elections will expire at midnight. New York Times writes that Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine generated $3.5 billion in revenue in the first three months of 2021. Wall Street Journal writes that two Republican lawmakers allege that Amazon might have violated antitrust law in seeking the Jerry Cloud computing deal. And The Guardian writes that New Zealand draws back from calling Chinese abuses of Uyghurs genocide. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds virtual summit with his British counterpart Boris Johnson. Launch Roadmap 2030 to transform India-UK bilateral ties. India and UK identify five areas for cooperation paving way for deeper and stronger engagement. More than 3,57,000 fresh cases of COVID-19 registered in the country. Over 3,20,000 people recover in the last 24 hours. At least 23 people killed as rail overpass collapses in Mexico City. And BCCI suspends IPL 2021 for the season after four players test positive for COVID-19. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnavajan, by artists from Nigeria.
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. 